Hello and welcome to Crypto TV. I'm your host, Ornella Hernandez, and I'll be breaking down some of the latest news from the Web3 world. We have a special guest joining us today to talk about the intersection of blockchain and sustainability. Let's get started. As the world moves towards a Web3 focused future, the debate remains. Do these technologies help or hinder sustainability initiatives? The World Economic Forum seems to think so. It recently released a white paper in which it claimed that blockchain technology is a vital tool in the fight against climate change. The report highlighted four main reasons. Firstly, blockchain's ability to strengthen trust and ambition within climate negotiations. It can also improve market transparency and credibility, as well as funnel more funds more easily to project developers for fundraising. And lastly, the WEF wrote that digitization democratizes access to climate action. Indeed, these reasons do touch on the defining qualities of blockchains. They are decentralized, global, borderless, and accessible, in theory. So it makes sense that a lot of people are concerned with maintaining an ecological balance and avoiding depletion of natural resources. Some of the issues that blockchain technologies may have the potential to address include biodiversity loss or disaster displacement, and energy grid efficiencies, as well as resource allocation and coordination. Then again, Bitcoin mining and mining of other proof-of-work cryptocurrencies is often criticized for emitting megatons worth of CO2 or carbon dioxide annually, comparable to the carbon footprint of entire countries even. And because of this, some blockchain projects are migrating to less power-consuming validation systems and exploring renewable energy-based mining. There are also green cryptocurrencies aka green tokens that were founded to fuel decarbonization mechanisms and provide alternatives to mining cryptocurrency. Some of the existing crypto tokens include Algorand's Algo, Solana's Sol, and Tezos's XTZ, whose blockchains all claim to have low CO2 emissions. Additionally, there are ESG initiatives or environmental, social, and governance related blockchain projects and platforms that aim to promote sustainability goals. For example, in the United Arab Emirates, a burgeoning crypto hub, there is one particular project that caught my attention, and it's called the Green Block. It recently launched thanks to Crypto Oasis Ventures, which is a venture builder that helps establish blockchain-related startups in the Middle East and North Africa region, the MENA region, in conjunction with management consultancy Roland Berger and UAE-based environmental management company Bia Group. The Green Block plans to be a thinkpad and launchpad for Web3 and AI-powered, sustainability-focused projects, with a focus on nurturing an ecosystem that implements solutions for corporate governance, environmental sustainability, and social responsibility. The initiative also aims to address global challenges in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and with the COP28 agenda. COP28 refers to the United Nations Climate Change Conference, or if we want to go for the long official title, it is the Conference of Parties of the Framework Convention on Climate Change. And this year, the conference is hosted by the Dubai government in the UAE. Another government-sponsored event happening in Dubai and leading up to COP28 is called the Future Blockchain Summit. And this summit is organized by the Dubai World Trade Center, which is a government entity with a mission to apply blockchain tech across government sectors. That's why I've asked Sunita Khatri to join me today and she is the Commercial Director of the Future Blockchain Summit, so please stay tuned for our conversation. Hey guys, we're here with Sunita Katri, the Commercial Director at the Dubai World Trade Center. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you very much. How about you? I'm great, I'm great. Happy that you're joining us here. I wanted to talk about blockchain and sustainability. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you a big loaded question here. You can answer yes or no and then we'll get into it. Does blockchain help or hinder sustainability efforts? Absolutely, it helps uh, sustainability efforts. And um, we have been seeing a lot of change in this space already um, with uh, a lot of these uh, cryptocurrencies moving from a proof of work to mm -hmm. a proof of stake concept. Right, uh, like Ethereum. Ethereum is a classic example of that. They, they did that last year and there is a transition into that space. Um, and more so even uh, blockchain and Web3 applications in general, um, they are uh, catering towards climate tech 
um, you know, um, ESG uh, uh, initiatives as yeah. well. So to answer your question, absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so what's your role in fostering a more sustainable and economic industry? at the Dubai World Trade Center? Sure, so um, uh, Dubai World Trade Center is a government organization. So we organize a lot of events in the technology space and this is really our forte. Uh, one of the most uh, prominent event is called JITEX, mm -hmm. which is a really large technology event yeah. across a lot of areas. It's been going on for decades, right? It's 41 like years, 41. exactly, <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so one of the largest and longest running, I think, tech is, events. It is, absolutely. And it became so large that it did not, it was, um, too many technologies in the same mm. place and it needed to have a more focused angle and hence uh, we launched uh, well five years ago the future blockchain summit yeah. which is completely about the government um, uh, uh, blockchain and the virtual asset space and it's completely government backed because the Bio World Trade Center is a government organization okay um, and uh, the initiatives that uh, you know considering that the theme uh, that well, the fact that COP28 is also happening this year, there's a lot of these uh, initiatives in that space. So we've launched um, um, JITEX Impact as well this year, which is an event which is completely focusing on uh, technologies around this. Okay. And of course, that gets reflected across all the other shows as well, uh, including future blockchain summits. So what's the timeline here? Because we have many events going on. These are all in the fall once it... That's right. It's dies, the all, heat dies down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's all happening in October. So October is going to be a crazy busy time. We see a lot of people from technology coming down over here, be it sustainability, be it blockchain, be okay. it telecom, mobility, fintech. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great time to be here <laughs> in the yeah, last definitely. quarter of the year. And so what are the main, I guess, like topics that all of these events are trying to to really push and emphasize in, the, in addition to sustainability. I know AI is a big uh, conversation right now. Sure. Um, and like you said, JITEX had to sort of split up. So what are the main technologies or emerging technologies that all these events are focusing on? Um, well, AI is definitely the, the theme of, um, of the event of JITEX in general. And I, AI is a technology, so that's going to be adopted across a lot of different verticals. Yeah. And it's always been around. It's not new, you know. Of course, True. it's become very, very popular and spoken about because of ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. um, but um, at the Future Blockchain Summit, I would say the focus is uh, around uh, DeFi. We see a lot of, mm -hmm. lot of traction in that space. Uh, Web3 Gaming. Uh, and Web3 applications in general. Um, we do see a lot of interest from um, Web2 companies who are trying to scale their technologies into Web3. Right. So there's a rising interest from these enterprises um, and, and gaming, as I mentioned. Uh, these are the, going to be the really the hot topics in addition to sustainability. Okay, and which one of those are you most passionate about? Um, I, I, I'm definitely very interested in the gaming space. Okay. I never thought I would be. Are you a gamer <laughs> I'm not yourself? a gamer myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's really intriguing the, the number of uh, companies that are involved in that. I came across uh, a crazy stat um, uh, last year that you know 40% of these games are currently being built, and this is going mm -hmm. to be a major industry in the, uh, by 2025. Yeah, it takes a long time. Yes, it takes, it takes 12 to 18 months to actually get a game uh, product ready. So yeah. it is very interesting and uh, I'm getting a lot of traction from the community. So there's a lot of passionate people in this space who want to do something great. Um, uh, so this is, it is actually very exciting for this year. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay. And so how did you get into the space in the first place then? Well, uh, blockchain uh, did not uh, just happen to me in uh, 20, in 2020. I used to do, um, uh, a luxury um, yachting event called Dubai Boat Show. Okay, that's very different. Very different, <laughs> a stark contrast to what it is right now, but I must say technologies are definitely a lot more interesting. Yeah, for sure. And so, um, but what made you like actually get into the space then? Was it your friends or like what was the event that sort of was um, like I need so to work? Well, the previous event was also part of Dubai World Trade oh, Center. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, it came to a point where it's like, I don't think I can make it any more interesting for myself. So how do I move on? You know, mm. either we, I, I look outside or within the company itself. And then this happened, the Future Blockchain Summit and FinTech Surge, which is another event that I look after as well. So that's completely in the financial ecosystem space. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's go into Future Blockchain Summit a little bit and then just what the mission behind it is and what you expect for this year. 
Well, uh, there are a lot of things happening this year. Um, like I said, we're doing um, quite an interesting feature in the Web3 gaming space. Um, sustainability is an important aspect of the event this year. We have a couple of really uh, cool highlights. So we're working with the Ministry of Economy uh, mm -hmm. of Slovenia. To um, we, we actually signed a partnership with them uh, where we're supporting the Climate Change Coalition uh, program. That they what is that? <laughs> so basically it's a program that they're doing at COP28 under the UN, uh, UN Pavilion, um, which basically supports um, technology startups which are mm. um, providing solutions for climate change. Um, so uh, it's a two-tier engagement. One is that we get we get to host these technology st uh, startups to come to the event and there is obviously programming around it uh, and the other aspect is um, um, Future Blockchain Summit does some program at the COP28 this year yeah. as well. I don't want to disclose much about it right now, but that's going to be a lot of fun as well. Um, so I'm um, very excited about this collaboration with Slovenia. And um, and we're also working with uh, Crypto Oasis, um, mm -hmm. which is a really strong community in the region over here. They recently launched their Green Block Initiative. Yeah. Um, is that similar to the Climate Coalition? I, it w well, it's, it's more in the, yes, it's Web3 applications um, supporting, um, uh, again, supporting the technology solutions in this space. So it is kind of similar, but um, uh, this is more focusing on Slovenia and startups from right. there, and this right. would be across a lot of different countries. So we're very excited about these two um, major initiatives of the show this year. And how do you see, like, I guess since you said that they're focusing on different regions, but the mission is kind of the same, right? It's still sustainability and, and climate change and ESG. So how does how does it differ when you go from region to region um, when you look for, for new startups? Um, I think it all comes down to the technology that has been offered by the startups uh, themselves, right? Um, it is what is cool about it and how are they going about doing that. Um, not all technologies are created equal, so it's basically selecting right. the right kind of um, companies to work with and to be presenting at the show. Um, the overall objective remains the same. Everybody is geared towards making sure that it is a better environment for us and our future generations. Right. You mentioned the Green Block. I actually went to the launch event that they had in Sharjah. And I got to learn more about how they're working with um, the BIA group and the consultancy in Europe. So I, f it's, I feel like it's like this whole coalition of stakeholders coming together. And I, I found that pretty, pretty amazing, actually. Yeah, I mean, I think they're doing some really um really good work around here. I mean, they're very well connected to this, uh, the community, um, but this is a new uh, phase for them as well. Mm. So they are actually getting deeper into, uh, you know, making sure they connect with the right stakeholders in the space and connecting them to a program which is also going to be happening at COP28. Okay, exciting. Yeah. And so tell me how you see the Dubai government sort of fostering adoption of virtual assets and, and how they're sort of embracing this this culture. Yeah, I, I think we're very lucky to be in Dubai in this uh, time and age because it's such a progressive government and forward-thinking government. So um, uh, the, the timing couldn't be better when it comes to um, having the virtual assets um, ecosystem grow over yeah. here. Um, they've been very forward-thinking when it comes to the regulatory framework uh, from what I've heard from uh, not just um, from VARA themselves, but also from um, the community that the comprehensive framework is actually very, very good and it's actually helps and facilitates business. So mm -hmm. this is something which is a very positive um, uh, initiative, I feel, and direction from the government. Yeah. I also feel that UAE has really got some really amazing incubation um, centers, you know, where they are these uh, regulatory sandboxes um, for companies to actually test out their technology, but also, um, incubator programs and accelerator programs for new technologies and startups coming to the region as well. Because it's not just about, yes, having a great framework, it's also about what is the talent out there as well. Right. Um, so a way to attract others to come here absolutely. and build their businesses. Yes, and I think the infrastructure is in place already. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of the best in the region. But uh, talent is probably the most important thing and supporting government groups as well as yeah. individual uh, communities is really, really important as well. So I think UAE has done a great, um, uh, great step in that sense. Yes, definitely. Well, I'm super excited 
uh, to attend all these events that you're working on, Future Blockchain Summit and COP28. And I can't wait until then. Thank you so much for having us. We're out of time. So until next time. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Today's crypto market report. Bitcoin, with a 4% increase this week, stands at $31,000. XRP doubles its value by rising above $40 US dollars in the past 24 hours. Algorand, also peaking with a 4.6% increase. XTZ, reaches a 15% growth this week. That's it for today on Market News and on Crypto TV. Please remember to hit that like button and leave your thoughts in the comments section below. See you next time, guys.